Well hello folks, welcome to another episode with Andy Outdoors. I've been given permission to use some different woods than what I'm usually in and this woodland that I'm in now is primarily beech and pine. Um, not going to give a, a, not going to give me a location away. Now I know what you're all thinking, camping in beech woods uh, can be a bit dangerous. Always look up for any widow makers uh, where I'm here now there's an open canopy so it's not too bad um, I've come here today to drop off drop off uh, 10 litres of water to do me for the next few days um, when I come out here later in the week I'm going to do a two, two nighter this time um, I've brought another special material with me as well so you'll have to tune in to see what I'm going to do with that uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is I'm going to do some primitive cooking um, using rocks and just using campfire. Been give, given permission to use a campfire in this area as well, so that's a bonus. So it's always a bonus to have a campfire when you're camping. So I'm looking, really looking forward to that. And I've just been looking around, and already I've started to find resources. Um, there's some old, very old, kind of rotten. Uh, oh, I've just spotted a polypore up there. There's some very old um, birch trees mixed in in this woodland, just scattered here and there. Already I've found chaga on this one that I'm meant against. Uh, some chaga up there at the top. And it's been lobbed off and it's all rotten. Um, I've found some brilliant fat wood. I mean, yeah, it's rotten, but uh, you can't get better than that. Although it is damp, it will need drying. There's a buzzard there, uh, just heard a buzzard as well. So there's loads of, uh, like this I'm sat on, loads of uh, logs and obviously we all know what this is the birch bark and really good for fire lighting as i've already demonstrated and there's loads of this here as well so that's the that's the campfire sorted basically um flint and steel i might have a go at making a bow drill like i say i'm here for two days so i can experiment a little bit now um so that's why i've come today to drop off the water the, the other secret material that i brought with me and um, and I wanted to show you as well my first aid kit. Okay, folks. So what I use is um, the high the uh, Highlander. I think this is the medium pack they do. Um, oh, the midi pack it says on the bottom there. Stupid me. Now I've seen quite a lot of videos of people with first aid kits, and they've pretty much got basically everything but the kitchen sink. Um, I'll show you what's in mine, and I'll explain you know why I've done it in the way I've done it so obviously all they all open up now as outdoor people campers bushcrafters and that kind of thing do a lot of walking so the first thing that's in there is a good pack of um, blister blister plasters now I love these things I got these from, pound, from, from, from the pound land shop uh, I get a couple of boxes and that's a couple of boxes worth don't keep them in the box just keep them in a ziplock bag keep them dry the next thing that I've got in here is let's see if I can get this open a little tub of Vaseline now you can use it on your skin as Vaseline as you use Vaseline but also an excellent fire starter with a little bit of cotton wool or some uh, some tinder put a bit of that in boom away you go so i've got a little tub of vaseline then in the pockets here i've got a pair of tweezers maybe splinters picking splinters out that kind of thing also in here i've got a mirror this is just a cheap one that i found i think i got this off a of car boot actually so i've got a mirror so if you cut yourself put yourself in the eye something on your face you can look at it like that, um, use, it, use it like that should I say, um, so you can see what's going on in your face. Obviously signaling mirror if you was in a survival situation, so it's multi-use. Another thing that isn't, really isn't first aid, but I don't carry a survival kit with me, so I, I put this in the first aid kit. It's a magnifying glass, obviously you can see splinters, um, you can see things enlarged with it, and also with the sun secondary uh, secondary fire lighter or fire starter should I say so they go in that little pouch at the front there 
then this in this in the midi it actually opens up so I've got a pair of scissors there now the I get all my I get all my first aid stuff from Poundland and the scissors they, they give you in the Poundland uh, bundles are absolutely rubbish they bend they're not stainless steel they rust so a decent pair of stainless steel scissors in the bed in there and they fit quite snugly there as well um, lastly uh, well not lastly but next I've got um, some rolls of plasters a roll, roll of plaster um, and I've also got in there some pre-cut ones because there's nothing worse if your hands are cold you've cut yourself you're having to cut up plaster so you can just dip into the bag get yourself one out in here basically is three items some disposable gloves a couple of alcoholic uh, wipes and one bandage anything that I consider anything more than what I've got is I'm in serious trouble if I cut myself I can plaster myself up if, I, if it's a big gash use a bandage I see people with multitudes of things in their first aid kit and it's, it's a 99.9% .9 chance you're gonna need it um, so it's always I recommend you always have one on your person if you're out about have it clipped to your belt so you can get easy access uh, there's nothing worse than you know being a few hundred yards away from your camp and this is in your bag and you you know you're bleeding down there you can patch yourself up quite quite quickly if you've got it on your person so I usually I will be having it on on me uh, on my belt so that's my first aid kit so like I say I hope it's I hope I've been informative with, with what I take in a first aid kit um, there really is no need to have a hundred uh, different bandages triangle bandages that kind of thing most of us now to make cordage if you need a triangle bandage or something to hold your arm up use a bit of paracord works just the same try and utilize your equipment what you've got so like I say anything more than that I consider myself in, in real trouble and I need proper medical help so that's my first aid kit now I've been thinking to myself over the last couple of days about why I'm doing videos for YouTube from childhood I've always had an interest in the outdoors and very early on in my childhood maybe six or seven I started looking at the world in a different way and thinking to myself well there's a whole larder out there of food that you can eat there's resources out there that we can use and we can live off the land however in modern society that's not the case and I think a lot of what the bushcraft community are trying to get the people in the bushcraft and camping wild camping community are trying to get back to is back to that kind of freedom now all these videos are really are for um, a kind of personal v vlog if you like of what I'm doing and each time I go camping I try and think of a better way of doing something and minimalize my kit um, I'm not going to say that I'm going to just say that's it to society and go off in the woods and go and live like a you know on the Anderthal again um, that's not going to happen well at least I don't think it is I'd like I'd love to go and you know spend a few months out just wandering around using natural resources but well, I haven't got the knowledge at the moment to I've got you know some knowledge of wild foods and what have you and how to how to cook and, and the techniques we use to get fire started there's fire starting the uh, fires going you know you can use a you can use a ferrous rod and a striker that'll last you you know a good few years using one of them alone uh, but if you've got the ability to make yourself a bow drill or a hand drill and get things going that way then you don't need your, your ferris rod anymore so you can use whatever is in the environment you're in when you get to the location that you're staying at the other thing um, that I wanted to say really is there's a lot of videos out there on YouTube and various places and they all seem to be you know people portray themselves as experts and all that I don't profess to be an expert 
um, I'm just showing you what I do. Uh, I, I get knowledge off the internet, I get I watch a lot of videos and I've got you know the knowledge that I've got in my head already. You know, this they, they say that the best thing in a survivor if you was a survivalist or a prepper or something, the thing that weighs nothing is what's up here. It's only the stuff on your back that weighs, you know, weighs anything. So the more knowledge you gain will stand you in good stead in um, for a lifestyle outdoors. Um, and again, about my childhood, uh, I used to go, you know, blackberry picking, and um, it's as we get older, we try and we kind of forget uh, forget things like the use of a simple dandelion root. Okay, I've not tried it. Um, when they when they start appearing, I'm going to try it. I'll let you know how I get on. If if it's any good, if it's you know, if it if it is a coffee coffee substitute, even. Um, like I say, I've tried the pine needle tea on a previous video. I've, I've gone back, researched it a bit more. I wasn't using it enough. So it's little things like that. And we're always learning, and, and that's what I want. Why I want to do these videos to help other people learn. I'm not saying that um, you know I'm an expert. Like I've said, I'm not. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is, your what I see YouTube as is you're coming along with me as I learn. So maybe you can learn things as well. So I just wanted to put that in there as well. Right, okay, folks. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to get off because I've got work soon, and this is four miles away, well, about four miles away from where I live. So I better get a stride on. Uh, funny enough, I actually met a bloke in a field um, on the way to this woods, and I got chatting to him. I was stood there for about half an hour. Uh, he's just given me permission to go and use um, some of his land for whale camping. It's very exposed from what I can gather. I've not been there myself. I've got to do a bit of research, find out what exactly where it is. It's at a trig point somewhere in this area. But he's given me permission to to use the top of that because that's his that's his land. So that that was a nice bonus for t for the for today. You know, coming to the woods and dropping me water cash off and and the other secret uh, secret material. So like I say, I'm gonna have a campfire, do some primitive cooking, and just try and not be so um, campsite-ish about it. Obviously, I need to bring some equipment with me, the usual stuff, hammock. Uh, I know what you're thinking, beach, you know. It's... I'll pick somewhere that's suitable and safe. Um, there's a lot of dead wood on the ground here as well. A lot of resources, one I've got making a spoon. I'm not gonna tell you everything I'm gonna do on this video because I'll do another video for it. So thanks for watching, folks. Like and subscribe. I do read your comments and I, I try my best to answer them, obviously as the channel grows a little bit more, um, it may be a case of I won't be able to answer every comment or every question, but I'll, I'll, I'll try my best. Right, okay, so that's me waffled on enough for today. I hope you like the little jingle at the beginning of the video. Okay folks, like and subscribe, I'm going to go now, get home, get a brew on, warm yourself up and I'll see you later in the week. Thanks for watching.